All right, welcome to part B in my playing MLS and Football Manager 2020 video series of the episode MLS Super Draft. And in this episode, I'll show you a little bit about how I evaluate players in the MLS draft to make sure that I get the most value that I can. All right, so I did decide to go ahead and um, divide my players on my MLS draft board into separate short lists. And I'll just show you briefly kind of what I did. This is... Um, so I've got, these are my top players, right? So this was my originally my draft board. All I did was I right clicked the guys who I felt like were the best prospects, went down to lists, moved to short lists, and I moved them to my top players, right? So then I, I had my next tier of players and I moved them to my second list right? and then down to my third list. Now what I'm going to do, the way this is gonna kind of work is I will, when it comes time to my draft pick, I will I'll first I'll watch the players as they get drafted. And if a player gets drafted that was on my short list, I'm going to remove them from my short list. Then I'll come here. I'll come to my top players, see if any of these are still available. And if they are, I'm going to draft them. Uh, I will, it's, obviously I've got, let's see, what, um, 12 players here. I have the eight pick. So at most, seven of these guys will be gone. So I'll at least have five. So I've got to figure out which of the five I'll want. I will look at their scouting reports, um, maybe compare personalities. I'll look at roles to decide which player I'm going to select. And obviously, again, I'm looking for the best player or the best prospect available because that's going to be my system. Again, maybe you have a different system. Maybe you're going to first look to draft the best right back that you can. Um, however, you, that's up, all that's up to you. I'm not going to tell you what's best, but what I've done is separated them according to the tier. Uh, I've, I've put them each into a tier. And so then we'll go to the top players. When all these guys are gone, when it comes down to my next pick, I'm going to look at my second level players and then we'll go from there. Now it could be possible that we get deep into the draft third, fourth round, and all these guys are gone. What I'm going to do then. I'm going to filter out the players that have been drafted, see what's left, and I'll kind of start the process over. Uh, I do take the draft kind of seriously, try to get the best players that I possibly can. in Because um, a lot of reasons. For one, it's, you know, you want to try and get the players that you hope can develop into future contributors. But then also these are assets. Right? These are guys that if you develop well enough, you can use them as trade bait. You can use them to trade for other players. You can use them to trade for draft picks. Um, so to me, it is, it, it's kind of important to me that I, I take it seriously. Now, you don't have to, right? You can just kind of wing it. You can rely more on players that you sign, you know, free transfers, uh, foreign transfers. But I, I like to take the draft seriously just because it kind of makes it more fun. So let's go ahead and dive in all right so the first pick of the draft with nashville sc they choose nick mckenna and as you can see he is on my draft board he was one of my top players so i'm going to remove nick mckenna take him off and no offers for the draft pick i do try to watch to make sure that um i don't have any offers right because when you do get a draft pick offer uh i'm not sure if they do it every time, but most of the time you'll have an item come to your inbox. But there's nothing, so we'll look at the next pick. And it is Gerson Taylor. I did not have him. Um, <laughs> maybe I should have. But it doesn't matter anyway because he has been drafted. It does look like a decent player. Don't know how I missed him. But you know what? That's realistic, right? Some, some teams uh, don't scout the way they should, and they pass on players. Um, so next pick was Steve Haim also didn't have him didn't like his balanced personality I can tell you right away that's what turned me off of him Taylor Edwards fickle he was the next pick by New England Columbus chooses goalkeeper cranky so I will remove him he was one of my top players still no offers for my draft pick and we'll go back just to make sure yep next pick and that is carlos garza did not have him um should i have let's take a look and see 
Only three star potential, so I'm not too worried about missing out on him. Uh, with the seventh pick, New England took Perkinson, and he was on my draft board. He was one of my top players, so we're going to move him from that list now. So now it's my pick, but as you can see, there are a lot of teams who are looking for to acquire my draft pick. See, I, my inbox jumped to eight. That means I've got several teams trying to get that pick um you can go to trades it'll bring you to this screen and it looks like uh, vancouver is offering me the ninth pick in the first round also chicago's fourth pick minnesota's second first our first round pick of uh, the 2022 draft so that's a good that's <laughs> almost three years away uh toronto's next year's first round draft pick and atlanta united's this looks like um Oh, they're wanting two of my first round picks. Uh, they are also offering $300,000 of general allocation money. So when you are in the draft, you can look at these, evaluate. Um, sometimes, you know, it, it's not a bad deal, right? Maybe um, when, when you're looking at these picks, what you'll want to think about is who is available and how long do I think they'll be available? Um <laughs> This New York wants wants to offer me two fourth round picks. They are offering almost a million dollar in general allocation money. International slots is an interesting uh, offer. Those are valuable, uh, and I'm, so Inter Miami is offering me Toronto's first and third and an international slot. Uh, that's one that I normally might consider, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to try and skip through. Um, but again. So maybe, you know, I'm thinking about it. I don't want to reject all the offers just right away. So I'll go to my short list and I will look at my top players. And, you know, maybe it would be worth moving down in the draft a little bit. That's what they kind of call that when you trade away a first round pick for a lower pick. Um, although David Lang is one prospect that I was looking at. He was one of the guys that I definitely wanted. He's fairly determined, got a 17 in determination. Um, most of his, he does have the best set of DNA attributes. This is my club DNA. Um, of everybody except maybe Lazaro. So I, I, what I have to gamble on if, if I accept one of those trades is, is this guy going to still be available to the pick that I'm moving to? Um, we can go to the inbox and see what the situation would be. So I'm eighth. My next pick wouldn't be to the pick 14. Um, we'll go back real quick to see what, if anybody, so the ninth pick, that one, I would only be moving down two spots, but I'm also only getting a fourth round pick. Right? That's not very uh, tempting, if I'm being honest. These are entirely too speculative because you're looking, you're trying to look into the future. And Vancouver is also wanting two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars of general allocation money. So you know you can't go through each one and evaluate um, this one. Yeah, I don't like the idea of trading two first-round picks for two other first-round picks that, for all I know, are going to be near the end of the draft. So I'm not going to do that one. Really, it's the same kind of situation here with Nashville. So I don't want to do that one. Yeah, just not going to gamble on the future. Now, if you're offering me two first-round picks in a future draft, maybe I would think about it, but that's not what's happening here. Um, general allocation money is not really that tempting to me because I can win that. This one is one that's tempting with that international slot, but I'm going to go ahead and reject it and go ahead and make my offer. We'll go through all these. Read these so that they're not in my inbox anymore. And let's see, the player, who did I decide I was going to get? Um, Lang, that's it. So pick player from draft, and now I have Lang. All right, so uh, what I'll also do is, well, I don't want to filter out drafted players just yet. So next pick, New England takes Brian Walker. All right, Brian Walker's there, so I'll remove him. And I'll tell you what I'll do is I'm going to, he's a level two player, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and skip, um, I think you've kind of seen how it works a little bit. So I'm going to uh, skip to the next uh, 
item that I feel is worth noting and pointing out for you guys. One thing, you can do this after the draft is complete, but I, I usually tend to do it as the draft proceeds. When you choose a player, at least most of them, sometimes for whatever reason it does not, but uh, you do have to negotiate a contract with your draft picks. So immediately after drafting the player, as I said, most of them you'll have an item in your inbox talking about the negotiation. You can't just hand it over. I prefer to speak with them so that I can try and get as good a deal as I can um, from them. Um, those are make sure all this is where it should be. Yeah. All right. So finalize those. Let's go to negotiate. And um, yeah, what I, I try to try to do is senior minimum salary with a lot of them. Maybe that's where I'll start. And um, and then go three years. Actually, you know, let's see if we can get five. So then you suggest terms and hopefully they accept that because now that's like the minimum salary you can offer them. It's possible that they will not count against your salary cap depending on how many senior uh, players and designated players that you have. Um, as, as you've seen in one of the videos, if you have, uh, if you have less than 20, senior or designated players on your squad then your senior minimum salary players will count against the cap but once you get to 20 they will not so i go for the minimum first i start there and then uh not all the draft picks are going to accept that some of them are going to demand a senior contract and i'll let you decide if they're worth it sometimes they will be other times, maybe not, but just keep in mind that you are then losing that draft pick. You will not be able to sign him. So, but more often than not, they'll accept this salary. And so I just finalized the deal there. All right. So here we are with the last pick. I thought I would show you a couple of other things real quick before um, we head out. And I do have one more selection. One thing you can do that might make drafting a little easier is you don't actually have to draft a player from the draft screen. So what I do, for example, when I'm looking for uh, looking at my draft boards for the next player I'm going to select, is I'll I'll whatever tier I'm on. So this was my top level tier. Um, all of these players, there's no more, there's no one else left on this list that's available. So I move down now to my level two players, and I look at the guys that I want in uh, in this situation i'm going to draft wayne williams uh i just believe from all the information i have that he is my next best option and if you right click you can go to pick player from the draft and you are selecting him directly from your short list screen so that you don't have to keep going i mean you're still going to have to go back and forth but this does save one trip per draft pick um, back to the screen so um so i drafted um, Williams, that is the end of the draft. And you like this is the email for the super draft email. It's no longer available for you to go back to the draft. And um, one other real quick thing, I showed you offering the senior minimum salary contract. Um, you with the early picks, it's a good idea to start there. But once you get past the second round, you start getting guys in the third round, fourth round. What you will probably want to do is offer a reserve contract. So I'm gonna start there with this guy. He's the last pick of the draft. I'm at least gonna um, try to get that out of him. And uh, reserve contract players do not count against the salary cap. Now you are limited with how many that you can have. So that is one thing to keep in mind, but they are a little cheaper. Um, so towards the end, it might be a good idea to start with there. We'll see if Williams will accept that. And he does. So uh, I had two draft players uh, sign reserve contracts. Again, you can only have six of those. And I believe uh, of those six, two have to be academy players. But um, reserve contract players have to come from somewhere. More often than not, it's going to be the late rounds of the draft. Uh, I'll even, when I get to the end of the second round, I'll even start trying to get players to accept reserve contracts. And sometimes they do. So uh, that is the end of the draft. And we'll real quick just evaluate how I did, right? Now you do your own personal evaluations. 
Um, but well, I guess use your own criteria for determining how well you did. I'd say I did pretty well, right? So if we go to my top players, I had what, 12? I had 12 when we first started, and I was able to draft six from my top board. Now, these are all players who either have high potential uh, or high current ability, which uh, Marco Brenner here does. He, I don't think he was my first pick, but um, his, his high ability, his high potential, and kind of overrode his personality, right? Um, and honestly, with Brenner, I think he's somebody that I'm going to later try and trade away. I don't know that he'll ever see significant time with me, but I'll give him a year or so of development and then see if I can get someone else to take him off my hands. Um, Rossi had some pretty good, um, <laughs> pretty good uh, uh, DNA attributes. Let's see. And he also had three and a half star potential. So he, you know, was a decent player. Look to me, Lang, who was the first player I picked, high determination. So the point is, I'm getting, I'm getting the stuff I want. Which for me, I start with personality, right? That's I've got to have. There are some personalities I absolutely will not sign. Some that I will. Maybe you have that criteria. Maybe not, right? Judging your own draft is is up to you and how how you value players. I'm, this is not what this video is about. There's plenty of those around that can tell you who to sign. I look at personality and I look at determination. So I got six guys off my top, you know, from my top board. I'd say that's pretty good. Again, I'm building the team that I want. And then on my level two, I got three from it. So I got nine players overall. So six from my top tier players and then three others. And these guys are, are strong in their own respects. Um, Baco, even though he's a mercenary, he does have um, respectable DNA attributes and he's got high potential. So obviously the mercenary personality is one that it's not great, but what it really only what it really means is just that he's not loyal and I can deal with not loyal. If nothing else, I can trade somebody that's not loyal and get somebody in who maybe is or get other assets that I can use. Um, John Billy, respectable player, very high determination, um, which is very important for my center backs. Uh, he also has, he's a leader, which was, I felt like that was something that I could use on the team. Always looking for leaders and he's driven. Wayne Williams, fairly determined, good determination. So, um, by building my board, I'm signing the guys that I want. I'm drafting the kind of players that I want that's going to fit into my, to my system. Now, maybe you're, maybe you are looking more for a playing style. I do look for that a little bit, but I feel like pl uh, playing style attributes I can develop. I can train on that. It's harder to train personality and it's harder to train, uh, these attributes over here. Well, especially the determination. So, um, so that, that again, that's how I draft and I, I think I did pretty well. I didn't even have to go down to level three. These were the only guys that were left that were not signed and I didn't have to dip that far down. So, um, to me, that's a good draft. Now, one thing that you'll be able to do, um, after is go look for players who were not drafted you can't do that right away but uh, so I, I don't remove these guys from my board just yet just in case um, maybe I'm needing to fill some slots or I'm wanting to try and build up my B team uh, I'll come in and get them later but uh, that is the MLS draft uh, the super draft so uh, and it's the by far it's the most important draft that you will participate in when you play MLS in football manager Immediately after the Super Draft, you're going to get an email that has the 2020 Super Draft grades. And as I put this in, because that is really common with American sports, is different journalists, different um, sports publications will try to grade uh, drafts really in every sport, how teams did in college drafts. It's kind of fun, but the reality is I don't put stock in it at all. You, you look here and it you know graves gives inter miami um a a plus but you know i've i've looked at their their uh draft picks which you go to transfers and transfer history you can see who they've brought in um i mean i'm not overly impressed that was was that this year's no where is it 
somewhere is the draft. <laughs> well, in any case, I the, the players that they've brought in are not overly impressive. Um, same with Minnesota United, and yet they're at the top. Meanwhile, they rank me down towards the bottom, right? So I'm not sure what criteria SI uses when uh, the the press puts this together, but um, you know I feel good about the players I drafted. I don't think that uh, I don't think that my E grading is fair. I guess they want to stay away from giving it an F, so they changed the F to E, but. Um, so, but it is something you get. I, I, I would just caution you not to, not to panic and dump all the players that you drafted just because this thing ranks you towards the bottom. I, I'm, I'm at the bottom every year, but I, I do pretty well with the draft as far as signing players that either help me to win trophies or that I then trade or sell um, for uh, significant gains. So. So yeah, don't put too much into the draft, the draft grades. And so that concludes my video on the MLS Super Draft. If you have any other questions, comments, please post them and I will try to answer them as best as I can. I do sincerely hope that this helps.